Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome to Monster Loves You, a game that has been recommended to me many, many times. I just never really got around to it in the past. I know it's actually quite an old little indie game at this point. It's been around for a very, very long time, but it looks cute, and I've been told it's kind of like a fun little interactive story, and I love just little interactive stories. You probably may have noticed, given I spent like four days straight of my life producing a massive choose-your-own-adventure novel out of Fallout New Vegas. So, little interactive fictions. I like these sorts of things. I like these little narrative experiments. Let's play this, shall we? So help me begin your story. How does it go again? So long ago, in the forest, monsters call the... they call the whale mist. The monsters called the whale. Oh, this story's got confusing already. I have no bloody clue what a whale mist is. That's right. Long ago, nestled at the heart of the forest, was the monster village of Omen. You're born from slime that holds the memory of monsters known for actions and attitudes, words and thoughts. I'm going to make myself a lovely monster. We're going to change everyone's view of monsters. We're going to make this monster that's going to properly like integrate into society and like become like a scientist or a doctor or something. That's what's going to happen. Words and thoughts. Yes, absolutely. You're not awake yet, but soon your first eye will open. Your simple dreams will give way to life itself. You, whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm playing myself before I've even been born? And I thought Fallout 3 started early in your life. I dream of helping the sick and soothing the woeful or outsmarting everyone else or speaking true when others lie. I'm going to outsmart everyone else. I'm going to be a super smart monster. That sounds nice. Your body is turning and twisting, growing solid in the middle of a great vat of green slime. It's time to be born. Wait. Is this super mutant propaganda? Is that just a really cutesy drawing of a super mutant over there? Is that how super mutants are born? They kind of come up with this internal mythology to make them think they're going to be all super cute and stuff. But no, actually they're terrible monstrosities that eat people. Click here to be born. And I have much cleverness. Lovely. Yes, be born, please. You awaken in the growing season when the forest is erupting with colour. Onwards! Your eye is open. You're a morsel just barely born. You float in the spawning vat. Dozens of other morsels are exploring, flailing, and stealing food from each other. <laughs> Try to swim. Yes, but born from what is the question? That's right, let's get into philosophical questions at a couple of minutes old. That seems like the sort of thing. From the slime. What do you think? And what is slime? How do we know what slime is? It's the stuff monsters are made of. You don't mean we're actually born from this slime, do you? Yes. Look, it's just mould and mushrooms, it's just the sticky side of nature. When the spark of life enters the colloidal gel, monsters just happen. Alright, fascinating. There we go, I hope we get some cleverness for asking about all of that. Another morsel swims towards you. It opens its mouth to show you a set of small, sharp teeth. It bites you? What? This is intolerable. Stop that biting immediately. You pause, unable to believe that another morsel is trying to eat you. After a moment, you snap out of it and start to move again. I could resist it, I could kill it, or I could unite the other morsels to repel the attack. Yes, let's form a little alliance against the nasty morsel. Screw that guy. You speak, your words are simple, but some of the morsels understand you. They converge on the biter. This aggression will not stand. Your tiny slimy flotilla frightens the bad morsel away. It retreats to the far end of the spawning vat. Yeah, stay there too. Now we can patrol the vat and look for- bloody hell, I've been born five minutes and I've already set up a vat-wide peacekeeping service, blimey. Splash, flutter, splish, squeak, another morsel is too weak to swim properly. It's sinking towards the bottom of the spawning vat. No, no, don't ignore it. Too bad these things happen. Oh no, that is indeed terrible. We shall help the little morsel and he shall be my friend. Alright, you feel a deep sense of injustice at the smaller morsel's impending demise. If only you could do some- do something about it. Yes, yes I can. You swim to the morsel, determined to act. Also, is that me? Because the game distinctly said that I had one eye, but I do very clearly have three. So get under the morsel and push it up. Use my cleverness. I have cleverness. Think of something to save the morsel. You rack your newborn brain. Wait, there. Some animal bones and sticks rotting at the bottom, half hidden beneath a slime clump. And I can prop up the dying morsel. Lovely. You swim to the bottom, casting about you gather some sticks at the long curving ribs of a deer. Get them jammed together good and tight. And the morsel's own dissolving body holds everything together well enough. Half its body is above the surface of the slime. Now make sure that nobody messes up what we've created. We don't want this guy to accidentally kind of fall off and die or anything. So you swim in circles around the rescued morsel, keeping the cruel ones and biters away until your new friend begins to move and solidify. Help the morsel off the str- Oh! Give him a hug. Give him a lovely hug. This is a nice game. As you do, you feel dizzy. 
That's a first. You've never been dizzy before. Everything goes... green. I hope I didn't just fall to the bottom of the spawning pool, because that would be unfortunate. Am I okay? Your friend is gone, but not dead. Another morsel points to the edge of the spawning vat. While you sleep, the weak one grew into a monsterling! Hooray for brains! You have grown too big for the spawning vat. You must move on to the next stage of life and become a monsterling. Well, I've got a friend. No, don't grow up. No, no, it's fine. We, we, we have to grow up and we've already got a monsterling friend, so it's okay. Got any advice? You're going to get into some trouble, which is great. Exercise your bravery, cleverness, ferocity, kindness, and honesty. What kind of monster will you be? A clever one. I'm going to be a clever one. To the brood cave, whatever that is. So eight days left... It is left until what? What's happening in eight days? A ticking clock where you don't even know what it's ticking down to. That's deeply worrying. I mean, you know, three days until the moon hits the earth. That's fine. There's a moon there. I can see it's coming towards the earth. But when a warning just says you have eight days left, that's somehow vastly more terrifying. So right now I have quite a bit of cleverness, a tiny bit of honesty, and I could probably do with a bit of kindness as well. Feels like, yeah, cleverness, honesty, and kindness. Yeah, particularly cleverness and kindness together. That feels like a good way of getting a good ending. Let's go for an adventure. Adventure we go. Choose your adventure. How about going to find some food adventure? What's that? That is a food adventure. Hamrag, an older monster, brings a big sack full of squirming rats into the cave. As he heads out for the spawning vat, he trips and all the rats spill out onto the floor. So I could gobble up the rats, help some of them escape, or I'm going to help Hamrag catch them. I mean, they are rats. Well, we're monsters. I'm not sure where that all fits into the hierarchy of things that are sentient versus not, but I'm going to help Hamrag. Yes, help Hamrag out. You race this way and that, catching rats and tossing them into Hamrag's bag. He pats you on the back, and I'm going to accept his praise. Lovely. So, respect plus five. Lovely. Uh, Hamrag says, nicely done. You could have just eaten them, but you saved them for everyone. You might be worth raising. After all, Hamrag gives you an extra rat to eat. Lovely. Ah, so the seven days left is how many days you have until your next stage of life. And the bottom shows how much respect you've amassed. Five points out of a total of 100. Yes, what is respect for exactly? Impress other monsters and they'll talk about how amazing you are. The more respect you gain in the early stage of life, the greater the power you'll wield later on. Okay, so respect is pretty important. Got it. Let's go for more adventures in that case. So I can only pick... Uh, seven out of these total. Let's go play some music, or whatever that is. You follow a thudding noise and you find Sickle and Lapper hitting animal skulls with sticks. Nash Nash stands to one side judging their performance. So I could join as a musician or as a judge. Well, as I've never played an instrument before, I'm probably not really qualified to do either, but let's say musician, shall we? So Nash Nash walks this way and that, watching as you take your position behind the skull of a bear. You think she's looking for weakness. So I can play with care and skill, or who cares about skill? Play from the heart. Yes, play from the heart. Be utterly, utterly terrible. So you drum as hard as you possibly can. Your sticks break and the skull shatters. Lapper and Sickle yelp in pain, but Nash Nash likes it. I think I just lost a bit of cleverness there. Never mind. Um, so maybe stop drumming at this point and just accept victory quietly. There we are. I've got a little bit of my cleverness back, having just lost some cleverness for breaking the damn sticks. So Sickle claps you on the back while Nash Nash chases Lapper away. You notice that Sickle broke one of her sticks too, but Lapper didn't break any. Okay, that may be important later. On to the next adventure. The Adventure of the Skull. That seems very, very dangerous, but yes, let's go for the Adventure of the Skull. So Elder Marinus leads you and some other monsterlings to a secluded grotto at the back of the cave. And what's that thing high up on the wall? It is a rusty iron cage. There's something inside it. Sticks and rocks, perhaps? It's a collection of bones. Marina says, this is a human skeleton. If you can get it out of the cage, you may play with it. All right, let's look at the cage and use some cleverness to get through here. The cage rests on a ledge several monsterlings high and only one monsterling wide. The lock rusted away long ago. A frayed rope hangs from the bars. So I could cut the rope, get help from a friend, or toss something up to tip the cage over. Uh, let's get our friends involved here. Let's kind of work together. So you ash Nash Nash for a boost. She laughs and throws you up onto the ledge. You crack your head, but you're there. So get out the bones and play with them. Or toss down, yeah, toss down the bones so everyone can play. That seems nice. Kindness plus three. You let the other monsterlings in on the fun. Nash Nash starts choking when she tries to eat some of the littlest bones. No, just give her a quick pat on the back. Bloody Nash Nash. That did it. She spits out the little nodules and seems puzzled. I can crunch animal bones easy. How come human bones are so tough? Perhaps there is a lesson here. Don't eat humans. All right, on to the next, and we are going to go into the terrifying giant moor of death. Why not, eh? 
So Elder Marinus again, he's floating in a pool of cave water, puffing her body like bulb weed. She points at something deep under the water. Will you get that for me, little one? But you can't swim. Hmm, oh dear, this seems like a bad idea. Uh, you could do it, you don't feel like it. Uh, figure out another way to get the thing out of the water. Yes, let's be clever here. So you jump in and pull yourself along the bottom of the pool with your claws. You easily reach the object, which is a funny yellow rock. Okay, what's this going to be? You roll it back to Marinus, who pats you on the head. Clever one, well done. Let's try and find something that will let me be kind like this vase. The vase of kindness, obviously. So you, Nash Nash, and Blistery are wrestling near a big clay jar. You knock the jar off its ledge and it breaks into a hundred pieces. You catch Elder Marinus out of the corner of your eye. It's my fault, confess. Take the blame for your friends. Make good and repair it or stay mum, nobody asked. Was it my fault though? Uh, yeah, I did. Okay, fine. I'm going to confess because... Actually, no, take the blame for my friends because then that might be some kindness. I wouldn't mind some extra kindness here. So that's... Oh, that's bravery, not kindness. Oh, well, never mind. You rush to Elder Marinus and claim that you were the one who broke the jar. She gurgles for a moment and then turns her enormous goggling eyes at you. Is that so? Yes, I am going to take responsibility entirely. And that is bravery plus nine. She smiles a little as she looks at the faces of your fellow monstlings, then pats you on the head and leaves. The other monstlings are momentarily awed before going back to their play. All right, then, lovely. Three days left, and let's go and find a three-eyed goat. Yes, that seems like a good thing. Marinus leads a group of monstlings to the Scrapegoat's Pit in Portant Square. Uh, what exactly is a scrapegoat, by the way? The scrapegoat is a goat, okay, with some monster heritage that helps clean and groom dirty monsters. Oh, I like him. He's kind of cute and derpy. I like him quite a lot. Uh, so, we've been led here. I'm not going to look for trouble. I'm going to go along with Marinus. That's 100% fine. Elder Marinus escorts everyone down into the pit. The scrapegoat stands and trots over to her. It's filthy and its breath smells like warm grass. Okay, so watch it in action. And Marinus turns her back on the scrapegoat. The goat uses its long horns to gouge at her hide, removing some dirt and several parasites. Okay, so she's clean now. Yuck, clean monsters, yuck, yuck. Wait, yeah, do we want to be clean or do we want to be dirty? I'm not 100% sure. Marina smiles down at you. Don't claw it till you've felt it, little one. It's good to get things out of your hide and not just for us. She's trying to teach us a lesson. Marinus withdraws to the edge of the pit, but she looks from you and the other monstlings to the filthy matted hair of the goat. So, ooh, I could offer to clean the scrape goat, or I could... No! Don't pick a fight with the scrape goat. I'm going to offer to help the scrape goat. So, uh, Marinus is delighted at your offer. You stay behind when the other monstlings go back to the cave. Clean that goat. Beautiful. So you run your claws through the goat's thick, wiry hair. Dirt, leaves, and twigs fall to the ground. Oh, apparently that is nice. So the goat shivers and stamps its hooves in a little dance of pleasure. When you're done, Marinus comes to take you back to the cave. Goodbye, scrape goat. I love you. Now let's go find some form of other animal from the footstep here. So you and Nash Nash spot Blistery and Smark playing a game. Nash Nash says, I got an idea. Who exactly are Blistery and Smark, by the way? Blistery thinks she knows everything. Well, I know everything. I'm cleverer than bloody Blistery. Smark never talks, but he can climb like he's half lizard and half spider. They're close friends. All right. So what is Nash Nash's idea here? Nash Nash says, look at the mushrooms all over the place. I hear they're tasty and they won't miss a few if we take them. What is so special about these here mushrooms? Why do they have to be special? Isn't being tasty enough? Why do you hate delicious things? I, I don't know, Nash Nash. I just don't know. Uh, no way, you're no thief. Help Nash Nash steal the mushrooms. Hmm. No, I don't think we're going to steal the mushrooms. Let's not steal anything. So Nash Nash hisses, gutless slime, smark and blistery, look up at their noise, then return to their game. Chastise Nash Nash or walk away from Nash Nash. No, let's chastise Nash Nash. Let's bring Nash Nash back to the light side of the force. You raise one claw in a gesture of admonishment and begin to lecture Nash Nash on the ethics of stealing. <laughs> she imitates you, mouthing the same words while making mwah 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 noises. Let it go. Teach her a lesson she won't forget. No, no, let it go. Walk away. There you Ferocity zeroed. <laughs> That's okay. It was already zero. That's fine. You accept your peers' mockery and walk away feeling superior. 100% fine. And I think that there is Marinus, isn't it? Let's go and speak to Marinus. So Hamrag, an adult monster, sleeps in a big pile of monsterlings. Everyone is comf- I'm not sure everyone should be comfortable. Aren't monsterlings like teenagers or children? And Hamrag, an adult monster, is sleeping in a pile of children. That's- No one should be comfortable with this state of affairs. 
Blot, giggling, sticks lichen in all four of Hamrag's nostrils. Hamrag's eyes shoot open as he starts to choke. Blot shushes you with a threatening scowl. No, no, no. Help, help Hamrag. We like Hamrag. We helped him earlier. So that's bravery plus nine. You jump on Hamrag's head and knock some of the lichen loose. He squeals and gasps and remember that he can breathe through his mouth. <laughs> Crisis has indeed been averted. So Hamrag glowers down past his jowls, scowling as though you hadn't saved him. He roars and demands to know who plugged up his nose. Tell the truth, let's get some honesty going on here. So, Blots did it, Hamrag thanks you, grabs Blots and sits on him. All of Blots' breath whooshes out and he can't inhale again. Hamrag stays there for a good long while. I think just he just murdered Blots. But never mind, Blots was apparently a dick anyway. And have we got time for one more adventure or are we growing up now? Oh my, you wake up and find that you're no longer a little monsterling. You're growing up. Wow, that's impressive. So, Elder Marinus calls the oldest monsterlings to gather in a group. You're one of the oldest ones now, so you should join them. She looks grave. And then, no, 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 don't hide and watch. Go with Elder Marinus. We trust Elder Marinus. She's always done right by us. Marinus shuffles down the long tunnel, turning this way and that among dozens of forking passages. Keep going, absolutely. Marina stops at a warm, humid chamber with a pit in the floor. She points to the pit, which seethes with thick mist. Uh, no, 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 wait for her to make you go in. We don't want to jump right in because we haven't actually been told to go in yet. So, wait for her permission. Marina pushes you in with a sweep of her tail. Playfully swipe at her tail with your claws as you fall. Um, is, are you supposed to playfully swipe at a teacher? I don't know. We'll see. Um, you fall and then fall some more. Lovely. And fall and you keep falling. Are the other monsterlings also falling? Yes, some of them are crying and you can't see through the mist. Okay, or is it fog? Maybe clouds, moans and groans and whispered screams. What is this? It must be somewhere. You land on a smooth flat stone. Despite the swirling vapour, the floor is dry as bone. You hear the other monsterlings breathing nearby. Some of them are still above you, still falling. Get out of the way. Let's try and cushion the fall for the other monsterlings. Okay, so that's some extra kindness. Lovely. Oof, you don't see who it is you helped. Whoever it is rolls away into a thick fog without a word. Gratitude is not important. You rejoin some of the monsterlings at the edge of the mist. There are more passages out of here than you can count. Some monsterlings begin to panic, while others look determined. And, oh yes, good old determination. Wait a second. Is this just Undertale? And maybe it's time for me to lead. I feel like I should take charge rather than letting someone else lead. I should take charge here. Beautiful. The other monsterlings watch you. Curious. So lead the way personally. Slash the others to show them who's in charge. Help everyone work together. There we go. That's a lovely way to do it. Kindness plus nine. You lead the other monsterlings in a rousing song. Putting aside their trepidation, they advance into the twisting passages. Soon you have all convened in a cave full of even thicker mist. So where on earth is everyone? The chamber swirls with mist, smoke, fog, vapour, except it's not any of those things, it's ghosts! Hundreds of them, large and small, they're everywhere! That is indeed slightly spooky. One by one, the pale ghosts begin to turn their attention to you. Their eyes glow different colours. And stand fast! Okay, no point kind of backing away. The ghosts speak in many voices, all hollow and distant, all in unison. They ask, do you fear? Yes, this is scary, attack them. Wait and say nothing. Alright, don't acknowledge them just yet. The ghosts are into you and through you, as though you're the one made of mist. One sharp voice speaks from behind you. Why are you here? So lecture the ghosts about the monster life cycle. <laughs> Attack them. Uh, maybe don't lecture them. Lecture feels like the wrong word. Just keep biding time. Okay. A small ghost coils around your foot like a cold, wet snake. The ghost moans, will you lend us some of your blood so that we may go on? Uh, I'm going to regret this, but yes, let them take a little bit of my blood. All right. The ghosts draw closer and closer, unraveling their bodies into ropes of fog like the tentacles of some great clammy squid. Their eyes grow dim, and you think you see fangs. Okay, so let them drink deep, trusting that they will only take what they need. No, I wouldn't. Watch them. Stop them if they take too much blood. Okay. You get ready to back away if necessary, then realise they're all around you. Biting and drinking, you feel dizzy for- Oh dear, I may have just made a slight mistake with the ghosts, to be honest. Oh good, this isn't a game over, I think. I think that was just how I ended my teenage years. Deep in a cave, being killed by ghosts. Well, that's pretty much how I ended my actual teenage years, so that's 100% fine. And I'm quite clever, quite brave, quite kind, a little bit honest, and not at all ferocious, and nobody respects me in the slightest. Beautiful. You wake up inside a well-appointed hovel. This is your home now. Okay, so what should I start doing next? 
The more brave, clever, ferocious, kind and honest you are, the more monsters will grow to respect you. Gain enough respect and you might someday affect important events in the world. Okay, I need to get respect in a hurry. Let's start living as an adolescent monster. And we are now going for Adventures in Town. Ooh, Adventures in Town, yes. And a whole bunch of new adventures, lovely. So let's go for humans. That's a human. Let's go find a human. You, Nash Nash, and Gob Claws hide in the stand of a prickly thorn bush, watching human children run back to their bus. But what's that they left? Shiny red round things. It's a scooter! Battle Nash Nash. No, just race to it and claim it for myself. No battling. So that's... Oh, apparently I got ferocity for that. Intriguing. You all charge out of the bushes, only to trip over each other and land in a pig pile of feathers, scales, and fur. Now what? Mine refuse to be defeated. Sharing is caring. Let Nash Nash win. I kind of want the scooter. Also, oh, is that actually me now? Like, that was in my house as well, but I used to be orange. But now, suddenly, I'm spherical and green, like I've gone through the most traumatic puberty imaginable. Uh, mine refused to be defeated. Okay, fine, let's share. We'll share and be lovely. That was only kindness plus three, damn it. As she pushes her foot inside your face, you realise Nash Nash is the true owner of the scooter. You let her up and pin Gobclaws, who bites your ear in fury. So not only did I hand over the scooter, I effectively decided to fight on behalf of someone else to make sure I didn't get it. Okay, maybe I should have been a bit more ferocious there. Let's do some more food stuff. Food stuff was good last time. You sniff the air, sniff sniff. Could that be frosting? Blots greets you and Nash Nash with fluffy pink cake. Nash Nash says Blots says he stole this from a human child. How do you three share it? And what's frosting? I think we know what frosting is. Uh, first the centre wins, distract the others. It's a human's cake. Think about it like humans would. Yeah, it's human cake. Are we even allowed to eat this? Is this a good idea right here? Humans do a lot of things. Sometimes they talk all day and sometimes they draw circles and cut them with chalk. So odd, those humans. Debate it with big words like humans would or figure this out using geometry, you know, like humans would. Uh, yes, let's figure this out using geometry like a human. While you scratch out different percentages using dirt and a stick, Nash Nash and Blots eat the cake, leaving you with nothing. Well, at least you learnt a little bit about maths. <laughs> oh well. Damn you, geometry, you betrayed me. Feather, let's go to the feather. So something smells good. You and Gobclaws find a trail of feathers at the edge of town. Following you find an eagle with a bleeding wing. Is that good? No, it's not good. For several hungry monsters, possibly. For two small ones, maybe not. This eagle is big, and hurt or not, he could probably mess you up pretty bad. So we're not going to fight him, we're not going to run away. We're going to get some help for the eagle and see if we can actually heal him up. Kindness plus 15, lovely. You leave Gobclaws to guard the eagle and run for the Spine Doctor. She brings bandages and soothing salve. So help the Spine Doctor tend to the eagle. Absolutely. That gets me even more kindness. The Spine Doctor works quickly and soon the bird can fly again. The Doctor says he will need to rest for some time as soon as he returns to his nest. Okay then, lovely. Right, straight on, we healed the eagle, and pile of rocks. Let's go to the old pile of rocks. Smark set up a human chess set. You sit down to play, you don't know the rules, but a smart monster should be able to figure something out. Yeah, let's just ask how to play, just in case. So Smark points at the pieces and moves some of them around, then knocks over one of them with another. It must be a fighting game, oh dear. I don't think I'm necessarily that clever. Smark then thinks for a moment, and with finesse, pushes all of your pieces down and taps his head. Sounds like victory. Aha, uh -huh, got it. So, Smark picks up the 16 short pieces and you get the 16 ones with different shapes. He makes one of the short guys kick over your horsey. Dear, oh dear. Use the Inferno Gambit, set the board on fire. Dragon Defense, blow Smark's pieces off the board. Feet of Clay, glue Smark's pieces to the board. Or Avalanche Attack, kick the board over. I feel like this is probably the cleverest version of cheating, gluing Smark's pieces to the board so he can't move them. Smark's pieces and feet are soon glued to the board. Unfortunately, that means that they and he are stuck standing. He wins, apparently. Oh dear. I may have made a slight tactical mistake there. Never mind. To the pile of teeth. As you're walking down the street, you feel a stinging sensation. Something just bit your foot. Uh, get it off, whatever it is exactly. When you look down, you see a small pile of human teeth in a small wire mesh bag. Some monster must have dropped them. So human teeth, ignore the teeth, help find the owner, someone through this way finders keepers. Yeah, let's find the owner if we can. So you visit Mupsy Moral, who agrees to publish a found ad in the Omen Harbinger if you want. She says, I can do a feature on how honest you were today. So give all of them back and skip the feature or keep a few... <laughs> Keep a few for yourself and get in the paper while you're at it. Uh, no, give them all back and skip the feature. 
I'm going to be very, very honest. That's, ooh, respect plus five. Excellent, just got some respect, beautiful. When he sees the ad in the paper, Hamrag comes and gets his teeth back. You don't step up and take credit, but Mopsy whispers something to Hamrag, who looks at you with dawning respect. Beautiful, tiny bit of respect there, very, very nice. And over here to the, I think that might be like the debating symbol, so that might be a good one to get some cleverness up a little bit here. You're not sure exactly how, but the conversation in Portant Square has turned into a bragging contest. Suddenly, everyone looks at you, waiting. So let someone else go first. Boast of your courage or refuse to boast. You're a good enough monster that you don't need to. Yes, refuse to boast. Marvellous. So that's, ooh, respect, honesty, and something that's hidden behind respect. So I don't know what it was. They all watch as you turn and swagger away, clearly impressed by your attitude and confidence. Very nice. All right, straight on to the next. We've only got a couple of days left. Uh, to the mosquito. Let's get malaria. After the rain, the last puddles linger. Looking into one, you see hundreds of tiny wriggling bugs. I could eat them, splash in the puddle. I'm going to look at the little bugs. Let's see if we can examine them a little bit. Cleverness plus nine. Very nice. The tiny bugs come to the surface of the puddle, breathe a little air, then swim down again. They don't seem to be fighting each other. How odd. One well, might as well eat them or study the bugs closely. Let's see what else we can learn here. Oh, even more cleverness. Beautiful. You think they're baby mosquitoes. The puddle will probably be gone before they can grow up and escape. Too bad for them. That's kind of sad in many ways, isn't it? Even as you stand there looking down at it, the puddle is slowly shrinking. Blistery joins you, looks at the bugs and says, Hey, a snack! No, eat the bug for yourself or lecture Blistery on the life cycle of mosquitoes. I love lecturing people on life cycles. Other monsters stop and listen as you compare the baby mosquitoes to morsels swimming in the spawning vat. Continue the lecture, why don't we? You explain that mosquitoes take on another form as they leave the water, much like a monstling coming out of the brood cave. You begin listing differences between mosquitoes and monsters, but the crowd has wandered away now. Your moment in the spotlight is over. And I'm going to let the little mosquitoes live. The puddle has lost half its water in the time you've been here. There's no way these mosquitoes will grow up. Let's try and save some then. Save them all. And there we are, a little bit more kindness. You look around for an idea. There must be some way to save the mosquitoes. But what? Run and ask the doctor what to do. <laughs> Uh, grab the container, take some of them home. The doctor won't care. Let's see if we can just, like, take a few home in a little kind of pool of water or something. That might work. So cleverness plus three, you grab a jar from your hovel, dump it out and scoop up as much of the puddle as you can. It sits on your kitchen table for a while. And now you have a pet mosquito! Oh, I'm so glad about the malaria I'm going to have. That's going to be perfect. The mosquito flies around and around you, then settles down and sucks a little blood from your hide. Isn't she cute? Name the mosquito Buzzy. Name them. I'm, yeah, I'm happy with Buzzy. Buzzy the Mosquito. That is a perfectly good name. Buzzy flies around the hovel, landing on a cup, then the table, then on you. She bites you and sucks some more of your blood. So cute. I'm going to die of malaria. And finally, avoid the fight, because I'm not a fighty sort of person. Let's go hunting for whatever that footstep is. So loud, drooly snapping sounds come from the square, where you see Profok single chloridly taking on a rampaging pack of wolves. He grunts to you for help. Well... This is certainly higher stakes than the previous instances have been. Uh, are these wolves actually a threat? Push Profit to safety and fight the wolves. Help him scare them away. Stand back. Maybe try... Yeah, yeah, Let's help him scare them away if we can. So that gets me loads of bravery. Making your ugliest faces. You and Profit terrify the pack, scattering the wolves into the forest. Very, very nice. And that will be the end of my adolescence. So adolescence is fleeting. You've grown beyond youth and become an adult. Yes, you say that. Now you have to go and get a job and start paying taxes. It's really not so great, I promise you. You've been dragged from your bed by your friends and neighbours. Trying to sleep here, fight them. Uh, so what, who, where, why now? And they tell you it's time to grow up. You're taken into the woods. <laughs> you see, you should have enjoyed adolescence more. It's going to be way better than what comes next. The neighbours throw you into the centre of a great circle of monsters, all older than you. They whisper to each other, then look at you, then whisper some more. And get on getting on. And the monsters murmur and mutter, spit and snarl. They're deciding what best defines you as a monster. So wait patiently. Yell at them to hurry up or take a nap. No, wait patiently. Totally wait patiently. After a while, the muttering stops, though the murmuring goes on for some time longer. Finally, the assembled monsters come to a decision. I'm a bit worried that 11% respect feels a little bit low to me. And what is it exactly? Come on, guys, tell me. The ring of monsters shuffles closer to you, forming a tighter circle. Elders loom over you while the smaller adults crouch low. Your surroundings grow shadowy and dark. And wait, what's happening? Or do your part in the ceremony of adulation. Yes, join the ceremony. If I know what the ceremony is, do my part in it. The monsters hold you in some respect, 11 out of a possible 100 points, 
Good for them. It doesn't seem that high, but all right. Someone calls you clever. A roar of approval rises through the cloud. You knew it. I am clever. All the monsters in the circle begin to hum, growl, and sing. It's a traditional serenade to the snake moon. Join the serenade or figure out a counterpoint and impress them. Yes, requires cleverness. I've got some cleverness. Let's do some cleverness. Oh, respect plus five. Very nice. Impressive. Everyone cheers as you improve the song in an entirely new way. And now to compose a new and better tune. No, no, that's enough. All right, don't get cocky. Just accept the cheers. I've impressed them. Let's not go too far here. And that gets up to 86% cleverness. And we've also got a lot of bravery, honesty, and kindness, but no ferocity, of course. That is all 100% fine. You're an adult now. You'll grow stronger over time, but your personality is no longer as mutable as it was when you were young. Onwards to adulthood. Marvellous. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as we've apparently reached adulthood and have 14 days to go before, well, I guess I die, I suppose. This is rather good fun. It's very charming. I quite like it. I think we'll finish off this kind of like single run through the game tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, and see where my monster ends up. So that's coming up soon. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true note. And this has been Monster Loves You. Really rather charming fun. Thank you very much and goodbye. T-34 moves closer to you. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get some with one of the finest tanks the Soviets ever produced. Owen, I wanted to ask you, do you think you... Oh no, who just showed... Oh, screw you, Sherman! Get out of here, you damn American! I want to make out with the Soviet tank!